Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Swiper, and welcome to another State of the Realms, your weekly news broadcast for everything Camelot Unchained. Today, I will be covering the weekly wrap-up for April 12th, 2019. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right, so for this week, there were about 15 top 10-ish items that the team went over, and I think about eight questions were asked in the Q&A section. So I'd like to cover five of my favorite top 10-ish items and five of my favorite questions asked. So let's start with number one, tech and rubble. Changes were made to rubble regarding adjustments to the visual effects on the keep itself. So from my understanding, it sounds like when the keep got hit by a projectile or something else, sometimes the rubble wouldn't react the way it should. Meaning it either didn't disappear when it should have, or it disappeared too soon. So it sounds like they were able to track this down and fix it, but it's not in the build yet. Number two, work in progress, the world map and UI. The team is working on UI for the world map. Concept art is being created to implement for the map. So when I say map, I mean the map that players will be utilizing by pressing M on their keyboard. Number three, tech. Projectile prediction. This one's a little hard to explain, so I'll do my best. I believe there was an issue with pathing in projectiles. For example, if a player were to fire a trebuchet, they might see a projectile fly somewhat sporadically in the air. It sounds like they tracked the issue down and were able to solve it, so going forward, you should see the projectiles firing or flying more smoothly in the air. All right, number four, work in progress. Gameplay support classes. CU is working on scaling aura abilities for support classes. Think of support classes in this game like a bard class or a speed class that you may see in other games. And just a reminder, support classes are not healers in this game. They also mentioned that once they do some finishing touch-ups on the mage classes, they'll be moving on to support classes so hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll find out more from these guys. All right, number five, work in progress, UI ability builder. So as of right now, the current ability builder is in a developer UI, meaning it's not too fancy looking. It sounds like they're shifting gears and starting to make it more user-friendly for players. And from the looks of it and the screenshot that you should be seeing right now, it looks incredible compared to what is in the current game. Okay, so moving on to the Q&A section. So this first question was long, so I'll try and shorten it so you can get a general idea of the question and the response. Question number one, are classes going to be more rigid or flexible in this game? Since CU wants to have 30 classes, they felt that each class should have a narrow line path. They bring up a simple example stating, if you decide to play healer, you won't have a true DPS spec. Your main role is to heal, but you can build a healer in different ways, such as building them to have more sustain or making them more mobile. It all depends on what you choose for your character, so think about it. Before you can even run around in this game, you get an option of selecting banes and boons for your character you also get to allocate points to your character. Once you start leveling, you also get to create your own abilities. Another example that they use is the Wave Weaver and how you can pick a boon that gives you healing for some of your damage abilities. So sure, you may have more sustain, but you might be sacrificing other boons that provide more damage. And the last point they bring up is the class called the Devout. Now this class can do some healing and some damage, and that is their main focus. Question number two, will we be able to see the height difference on the map? So they go into detail about how this map is going to be more abstract and stylized uh, for a fantasy based game. They're going to have markings like a forest and a mountain and a cave and, you know, some of the things that you're used to seeing. But they use an example. They said, you know, go to Google, type in uh, medieval map and it's going to be more like that. Question number three. Will there be visual effects when a player gets hit? The answer to this is yes. This should be in the game right now. For example, if you hit a player with an ice bolt, you will see an ice cloud form after they are struck. 
The team also talked about how they would like to show debuffs and buffs as small icons. This way you can quickly tell what your enemy or ally has on them. They also went into pretty big discussion about how they need to balance the visual cues and visual spell effects. So this way, when you're fighting 100, 200, 300 people, it doesn't get completely crazy and everything just looks absolutely nuts and you have no idea what's going on. All right, number four. Will Professions be in Camelot Unchained like WoW? So in Camelot Unchained, crafting is a class. So if you're playing a Black Knight, which is a combatant class, and you want to do mining, you will need to make a separate character to mine. Crafting will not be a side profession or a subclass. If you want to craft in this game, you will need to make a crafter. Now I understand that you'll be able to craft minimal things on combatants. For example, let's say you're playing an archer and you run out of arrows. Well, you'll be able to make arrows for yourself. And I can't imagine these arrows will be too great, but at least you have them. And I also understand crafters have the ability to fight, but they won't be winning any 1v1 fights. Question number five. If you see your more rigid class system is perceived poorly by players, will you change it to be less rigid or stick to your guns? So this was a great question and they provided a long response to it. I'm going to try and give you a brief overview of what they said. So basically, they said they are always listening to feedback. The sooner they get feedback, the better. If a large majority of players reached out and said that their class needs to be changed because they couldn't participate in fighting for a good portion of the time, then I think this is when they would start considering. But one thing I want everyone to understand who's following this game and watching these videos, Camelot Unchained reached out to all their backers and everyone following in the beginning and asked them two questions. Do you want less classes that have a wider range of paths they can go down that gives them broad strokes? Or do you want more classes that have a more defined role with fewer you know, paths? And a majority of the players that backed this said they wanted option number two. So I think overall CU is going to stand by their mechanics and their class design. I think they'll definitely listen to feedback and take into consideration what people are saying, but I think for the most part, they're gonna to stick to their system. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for me today. I highly, highly recommend you check out the weekly wrap up for yourself. There was a lot I did not cover. I will post the link below in the comments section. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And if you want to keep getting weekly updates, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks again and have a great week.